Now once upon a time, England and Spain were at war, and the way that plays out in the new world is you go up to your local governor and say, Hello governor, I would like to do unspeakable things to Spanish merchants and give you 10% of their stuff. And the governor says, Jolly good, and hands you a letter of mark, so that if you're ever out keel hauling some poor Spanish sailor and an Englishman for whatever reason pulls you over, you show him this piece of paper to let him know you might be a pirate, but you are a pirate who pays his taxes. Or I guess, more accurately, it's a way to explain why you just pulled into Port Royal accompanied by 300 men with guns. It's 1660 now, and the war with Spain is over, so everybody's meant to yo their last hoe and pack in their weapons. But that's where Mr. Modiford comes in. Modiford was the governor of Jamaica, and he was kind of like your cool uncle, or the parent you go to to ask permission after the other one told you no, because he tried to pass a law to stop privateering, but unfortunately stealing Spanish shit was like 90% of Jamaica's economy, so he just undid it. But Modiford knew that Spain wouldn't sit idly by while her ships were being sunk and looted, and he knew that sooner or later the Spanish would tie everything back to Jamaica. And he knew it was only a matter of time before the island would be under attack. So he thought long and hard and racked his brain to come up with a way to prevent violence. And he came up with overwhelming violence. Which is how it came to be that he passed a letter of mark to one Henry Morgan and told him to run buck wild. Shiver me timbers! It's the dread pirate Henry Morgan, and he's after our booty! That's right, I'm coming to get your booty and make terrible puns while I blow you to kingdom come and dance on your ashes. Quickly, deploy anti-pirate measures! What the? You've been in Canada this whole time? He thinks we're in Canada? Ha <laughs> ha! Now that we are protected by NordVPN, our IP has been rerouted, and there's not a thing these scallywags can do to touch us! We can be anywhere around the world! By the devil, they're in Japan! We'll never be able to catch them at this rate! Dandy, 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 dandy. Hark! From whence did these wandering players appear? Oh, that's the best part! If you change your IP with NordVPN, you gotta watch shows that are region blocked in your country! New Amsterdam 99, anyone? What about the other forts in our humble city? How shall we protect them? Surely we shall bankrupt all of Spain if we give them all NordVPN! Not at all! For just the price of a cup of coffee, we can connect up to six devices with a single account! Don't miss out on this discount! Go to nordvpn.com slash jackrackham and unlock the true value of your streaming services today! A buck wild at sea, anyway, not to go wantonly attacking civilian towns, but, says Morgan, look at it this way. I loot a Spanish ship. Yes. 10% is going to the English. Those are the rules. I sack a Spanish town. That's illegal. And so you won't ask for a cut. Still illegal. Oh, come on. They're a rival empire. I'm practically doing you a favor. And, if you sack a town 50 miles inland, well, they'll never see it coming. That was Morgan's reasoning anyway, but unfortunately, there wasn't much loot there. According to fellow privateer Sir Mixalot, quote, It caused a general resentment and grief to see such a small booty. Things were not looking up when 200 of his French crewmates all left after an incident where an Englishman on board stabbed one of them. But nonetheless, Morgan had a plan to turn things around. A city with far superior booty, something on the continent with heavy fortifications. The beautiful port of... Portobello. Honestly, I don't know why you're bringing this up to me. Don't be a spoil sport. I'll bring you back a souvenir. Morgan began his attack before dawn, approaching one of the city's forts. He'd taken a prisoner earlier in the night and used him to approach the walls. Alonzo! Who are these guys? Friends of yours? Uh, they're pirates. And they want you to surrender. Open fire! And then the town was on high alert. Morgan captured the fort and was gracious enough to accept the garrison's surrender. <laughs> Did you hear about the explosion at the cheese factory in Paris? No, no. All they found was debris. 
Yeah, so the governor and all the citizens hiding in the city's other big fort were not in the mood to surrender after Morgan blew up all his prisoners. This little castle turns out to be substantially harder to crack. Morgan's men are shooting down the defenders atop the walls, but taking heavy casualties and getting no closer to breaking the walls. So Morgan decides to get creative again. He builds a bunch of ladders, and then rounds up all the local priests and nuns and uses them as human shields to approach the fort. Not just that, but uses them to lead the assault. Eventually, the pirates make their way in, and the governor goes down in a blaze of glory, which is to say, in great pain whilst shooting pirates. Even some of his own men who had tried to surrender. This guy was ice cold. Morgan stayed in Portobello for a month, stripped all its valuables, and demanded 350,000 pesos for the city's return. The president of Panama wrote to Morgan to declare, We will not negotiate with terrorists! Morgan wrote back, saying, We killed the army you sent to recapture the city. How about 100,000 pesos? He and Morgan must have really become good pen pals over his month in Portobello, because the president of Panama also wrote to say, Oh, Captain Morgan, you're such a brilliant commander. Won't you send me a token of how you took the city? Humiliation kink, not really my thing, but here you go. Knock yourself out. And he sent him a small pistol with a handful of bullets and a note that said, Keep it in your mansion. I'll be sacking you next year. I mean your city. I'll attack the capital. Where's the whiteout? What do you mean, invented 1956? Once again, however, Morgan would face an unexpected setback at a dinner with the captains of his fleet. It was an unfortunate accident that killed half his captains and most of his crew, but he decided to put that set back behind him by attacking Venezuela. He raided Lake Maracaibo, actually a bay, and was having a jolly time pulling refugee Spaniards from the jungle and viciously torturing them to uncover their buried treasure, yar! But shock and horror, a Spanish fleet came and blocked the exit to the bay. The Spanish captain Espinoza had been tasked with eradicating piracy, so he told Morgan, Ha! The only way you leave this bay alive is if you put down the things you just stole, at which point we'll wish you a safe and happy journey back to Jamaica. And Morgan says, I'd rather die. Sir, they don't appear to be firing. Oh, I guess he really would rather die. Sir, we've just received another message from the pirates. And the first man said, the captain's gone. Gone? Where did he go? All over the place. There's still the fort! You'll never get past! Then tell them we shall fight our way through. And then everyone in the fort panicked as Morgan's rowboats came ashore, and they pointed all of their guns towards land, while the empty pirate ships fluted out with the tide, then the crew popped up, dropped their sails, and boogied out. Morgan would have just one last great adventure in his career when he finally made good on his promise to the president of Panama. Montyford had originally retracted Morgan's letter of mark for all of his illegal shenanigans until the Spanish started hitting him back with their own privateers, at which point Montyford replied, Hey Morgan, why don't you go for a walk? Morgan was now at his most powerful, with 30 ships and 2,000 men under his command. On his way to Panama, he seized control of a fort at the mouth of the Chagres River, rode up in canoes, and handily defeated several ambushes laid by the Panamanian governor. Morgan continues to prove himself a more clever commander than you would expect of the delinquent son of a Welsh farmhand, luring in the Spanish cavalry and utterly defeating their army. The governor hatches a new plan of his own, one unorthodox enough to throw even Morgan off guard. He rounds up all of the oxen in town and releases them onto the battlefield, and once frightened by the gunfire, they stampede and create utter chaos. Unfortunately, they stampeded into the Spanish army. So the governor knows only one thing that can stop Morgan from getting his plunder. Men, commence raiding and pillaging. Morgan arrives in Jamaica nearly empty-handed, only to discover... Ah, Mr. Morgan! Muddyford? Seems our luck's run out, I'm afraid. The king signed an agreement not to do any more harm to the Spanish, and, well, you've just blown up one of the largest trading hubs in the New World. Listen to them. 
heartless savages. Always happy to watch a good hanging. I've got to be real with you. I was really hoping I would die with someone cooler. Well, at least I didn't hijack a nunnery. Oh, oh my goodness. How did we get here? And London. Why did it have to be London? They... Oh. Gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to meet you. Your Majesty? Please, your Majesty was my father. Call me Chuck. This is a hell of a last meal. Last meal? Oh, good heavens, no, you're heroes! No, just anything to stop the Spanish Queen's whining. We fought Cromwell, we kept you safe! Where's Panama City? Nag, nag, nag. Legally speaking, you are sitting in the Tower of London right now. You're very sorry for being such a bad sport. Give it a few years, and now you are Sir Henry Morgan, Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. I kid you not, the man was arrested, taken to England, probably never put in jail, knighted by the king, and sent back to Jamaica as the deputy governor. He never got on well with the other officials, being a former pirate and all. That, and he was still investing in other pirates, he couldn't give out letters of mark, so he directed all of his privateer friends to Tortuga to go attack the Spanish on France's payroll. But eventually, one of the former governors paid 50,000 pounds to the king and got Sir Morgan fired. But by then, Morgan was around 50, so rather than return to the sea and embark on more raids to force nuns to do his dirty work at the point of a gun, he embraced the life of an English gentleman and raided the hills of Jamaica to capture the descendants of escaped slaves and force them to do his dirty work at the point of a gun. 